Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to be talking about Alembic. This is going to be talking about what it is, how it's used, and how we're going to use it specifically in this project. Now we have our database model set up and it's written, but as you saw in the last video, we couldn't actually use it to return anything. Now the reason this is, is because our actual database is not set up yet. While our Python file is assuming a certain number of columns and tables and relationships, our database has no relation to it. Now if we go in the DB browser and actually view it, you'll see this. So let's open up DB browser, and we're going to drag this into our DB browser to open it, and you can see that it says no database file open. This is a totally blank file and it has no actual creations or tables ready. Now, while there is a way to do this in SQL Alchemy, it is a little bit primitive, and every time you wanted to make any changes, you would have to basically delete the entire database or perform some manual migration, which is a very huge deal. So what we're going to be using is a tool called Alembic, which is basically going to automatically detect the differences or allow you to manually put in those differences between your models that you use in SQL Alchemy and how you are going to be using your database, and it will automatically perform those upgrades for you. So what we're going to do is start by installing it. So I already have it installed, but what you can do is type pip install Alembic, and that will install everything for you. Now once you have that, we need to create a new directory to store st all of our Alembic files. So what you're going to type is Alembic, init, and then the name of the directory you want, which I'm just going to call Alembic here to make it simple. So there we go, you can see it generated all of this stuff. And now we're going to have two new files, or in this case, one new file and one new directory. This initialization or configuration file, and we're going to have a new Alembic that directory that is going to contain all of this stuff. Now, our initialization file is going to contain some very important information. Now, you can leave all of this the same. It's not very important. It's more for formatting, but this is the important one. We need to change this URL to our URL. So what I'm going to do is go into our file that contains our URL, which I have written down here. It's in the DB. We're going to copy this, go into our init initialization or INI file, and paste that in. Now we have our URL done, the next thing we need to do is basically import our declarative base into our Alembic environment. So you can see if we go into our directory, there is this env.py file. This contains a bunch of configuration information in Python. Now one thing we need to do is go and actually select our base from our db.py file, and this is going to basically use the base to detect any differences between the actual database and whatever declarative base we have and what we're writing in Python. So we're going to go to our env.py and find where it is talking about our metadata and our base, and it's right here under the target metadata variable. So what I'm going to do is say from models, which is our models.py file, import base, and then we're going to set our target metadata to the base.metadata. Remember, base is the declarative base that we declared and created all of our models based off of. All right, so those are the two only setup things you need to do. Now we can actually get started with our Alembic migrations. Now this basically works in two stages. The first is creating an Alembic revision, which is going to create the Python file and everything that you need that shows you the history tree or migration that you want to use, and then actually upgrading to that revision. So we're gonna start by creating a revision. Now the way you do this is by typing Alembic revision, and then you add a message. So what I'm going to call this is just first revision. It's very easy. This is going to be the first migration, so it's basically going from a totally blank database to a full one. Now we're also going to add another flag at the beginning, which is auto-generate, dash dash auto-generate. And what this is going to say is go look through that de declarative base and look for any changes that are different and add them directly into the file. This is going to make things a lot easier to work with. So once I hit enter, you can see it does all that and generates and shows you all of these new auto generations that have been done. Now we go to our Alembic directory and go under versions and it has created this new version. Let's open it up and see what's inside. So first it has some general information about what's going on. And then we have these two functions, upgrade and downgrade. So Alembic basically works like a history tree. What you're going to have is a bunch of different snapshots in time of your database. If you've ever used Git or GitHub before, you'll know that it follows the exact same structure, and you can move up and down between these migrations. So the downgrade is going to be going one down, and the upgrade is going to be going one up. 
So let's look a little deeper into these and see what's going on. Now under our upgrade function, we are going to be creating a new table and adding all of these columns, just like we indicated inside our database file or our models file. Now one extra thing that you may not see here is these index indexes. Right here where it says IX, user email, user ID, these were not placed inside here. Now what it's basically doing is following SQL naming conventions and adding these indexes manually, which is basically what happens in the models, but it's just not shown, and then doing all of that. It does the exact same thing for the tasks table, and it's basically just creating everything in the database. Now for our downgrade function, what this is basically saying is we're going to delete all of these indexes and then delete both of the tables. So go back to basically nothing, just as we had before. All right, so now we have our first revision. Let's go and see what it does and how to use it. So the way you can upgrade is by typing Alembic upgrade, and then you type in either the revision code that you want, or you can type in head, which will go directly to the highest level. So I'm gonna type that, and you can see it says that and did, did the entire revision and upgraded it properly. So now, once I have opened my to-do app database, you can see that we now have a bunch of new tables. If I go into browse data, you have this Alembic version table. Don't worry about that. That's for internal use with Alembic. But if you go and look through item, we now have all of these new columns and user, exact same thing. And now our database is properly set up. So it wasn't set up like this in the past video. Now, let's say I wanted to perform a migration. Let's say, for example, in our models and in our schemas, I also wanted to add a name column. So that's what we did in the last video. So if I wanted to, let's say, modify this and say we didn't want the index anymore. So I could change this to false, for example, or just keep it all together. Say, for example, the name wasn't indexed. I didn't want to search by name anymore. Now what I could do is create a new revision. Oop, not there. We need to go to our terminal. So I'm going to say Alembic revision dash dash auto generate. Remember, we wanted to auto detect dash M and then dropped name index. Create it. Now we go to our versions and you can see a new revision has been created. We look at our upgrade. You can see the index is just dropped. And now we have a create index where if we downgrade, it's just going to create it up and attach it to our user again. So now let's say I wanted to upgrade. So I'm going to say Alembic, upgrade, and instead of starting start typing the head this time, sorry, what I can do is just type in the first unique number of characters of our revision code, and it will automatically detect what we want. So if I just type in 7ECC, for example, it will detect that that's the revision we want. Upgrade, it does that. Now let's go check our DB browser, so we'll have to refresh it so we can see it. And now if we go to our database, you can see that the index for our name is no longer there. So what if you messed up and let's say you wanted to go back to a previous database state? That is extremely easy. All you have to do is instead of typing Alembic upgrade, you type Alembic downgrade. Now you can type in the revision name. You can also type in relative indexes. So you can say minus one or plus one or however many you want. Let's say I wanted to go down minus one. Type it in and you can see that now we'll check our database. Browse data, refresh, go to our database structure and our index has been added. So there we go. That is how you use Alembic in summary. There's of course a lot more to it, but this is the extent that we're going to be using it for our application, and it's about 90% of the way there. So to summarize, Alembic is a tool that you can use to migrate and modify your database based on how you've specified it in Python using your SQL Alchemy declarative base. You can modify it however you want, upgrade and downgrade. It's basically storing a history of snapshots. It works through a series of revisions, so you create revision files with specify the changes, and then you enact those revisions, and you can move up and down however you see fit.